Today, we're diving headfirst into the mind-boggling mysteries of the cosmos, and trust me, you won't want to miss a single second of this adventure. Picture this. A bell, 2744, a colossal cluster of galaxies situated a staggering four billion light-years away. That's right. We're talking about a neighborhood so far-flung that it's practically in another cosmic zip code. But here's the kicker. It's not just any ordinary cluster. Oh no, a Bell 2744 is shrouded in secrets with its very own gravitational sleight of hand. You see, nestled within its vast expanse lies a halo of dark matter, a cosmic cloak that bends and distorts the fabric of space itself. It's like having a giant magnifying glass in the sky, allowing us to peer deeper into the cosmos than ever before. And that's exactly why the Hubble Space Telescope had its sights set on this celestial spectacle, paving the way for the groundbreaking discoveries that lie ahead. So buckle up, folks, because we're about to unravel the enigmatic wonders of a Bell 2744 and unlock the secrets of the universe. But before we dive in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and join our community of space enthusiasts. And this is where our smudge got interesting. Jody WSD observes deep into infrared wavelengths and showed that the object has IR colors, consistent with a galaxy whose normally visible light has been stretched out by the expanding universe, increasing or redshifting its wavelength by a factor of over 10. Higher redshift means larger distance, and a redshift of 10.1 means this light has been traveling for around 13.2 billion years, coming to us from a time near the beginning of time when the universe was less than 3.5% its current age. That earned our smudge the name UHZ-1, for ultra-high redshift galaxy number one, where the Z is the symbol for redshift. That's cool but JWST has now found galaxies quite a bit more distant than this. The really exciting moment came when we pointed another orbiting satellite at the smudge. This is the image by the Chandra X-ray telescope. It turns out there are a lot of X-rays coming from this little blob. Now, X-rays are much harder to bring to a sharp focus, so the four pixels of X-ray light aren't coming from across this spread out region, but rather from somewhere inside this region. There's really only one known way for a galaxy to be blasting out X-rays at this level, and that's by harboring a quasar. To refresh your memory, a quasar is when the supermassive black hole, the SMBH, that lives at the center of every galaxy, starts feeding. As matter swirls towards the black hole, it's superheated until it outshines the entire surrounding galaxy. And just before it reaches the black hole, conditions get so crazy that the space outside the black hole glows bright with high-energy X-rays. Based on the amount of X-ray light and the distance, we can estimate that the black hole must be 40 million times the sun's mass. That's 10 times the mass of the Milky Way's own SMBH. UHZ-1 is the most distant quasar ever discovered, which also makes it the earliest known quasar and so the earliest black hole that we actually have evidence for. So with that out of the way, let's get to the good stuff. To understand why UHZ-1 is so exciting, you have to understand one of the biggest debates in cosmology, the origin of supermassive black holes. Essentially, every galaxy in the modern universe has at its core a black hole that's 100,000 to several billion times the mass of the Sun. We also see much smaller black holes, so-called stellar black holes, that can be in the rough range of 10 to 100 solar masses. Oddly, we don't see black holes in the middle range of 100 to 100,000. We'll come back to why that's odd. Now, we know how to make stellar black holes. They're what you get when the core of a massive star collapses on itself after the star dies. So how do you make a supermassive black holes grow? That's the big question. It could be they grew from the very first stellar corpses in the early universe, gulping down gas and merging with other black holes for billions of years to reach their current enormous sizes. 
But over the last decade or so, as we looked to greater and greater distances, we started to find quasars shining out from the first billion years of cosmic time. Quasars powered by supermassive black holes that should not have had enough time to get that big. There are two potential solutions to this conundrum. Either the black holes started small and grew way, way faster than we thought they could, or they started much bigger than the black holes that form in stellar deaths in the modern universe. These are the small seed and heavy seed models, respectively. UHD-1 is going to help us choose between them. Let's start with the small seed model. Can a stellar corpse grow into a quasar engine in less than a billion years? Well, it's tricky. There's a limit to how fast a black hole can feed, even with an endless supply of gas. As gas spiraling into a black hole heats up, it blasts out radiation, which pushes on the infalling gas and counters the black hole's gravity. Bigger black holes can eat more and radiate more, but there's always an approximate upper limit that increases with that mass. It's called the Eddington limit. You can calculate how big a black hole would grow, feeding at this maximum rate for a billion years, and the answer is not big enough to explain those early quasars. That said, there are various tricks we can include to make the small seed model work. There are scenarios in which black holes can feed faster than the Eddington limit, although they still need to feed non-stop to reach supermassive status so quickly, which itself is a problem. Or you can form a lot of black holes close to each other and have them merge very quickly. Or you can start out with really, really big stars, leaving behind black holes that are maybe 100 or even 1,000 times larger than are produced today. In the modern universe, all the heavy elements released in past supernovae cause gas clouds to fragment as they collapse, leading to smaller stars. And there you have it, fellow cosmic adventurers. We've delved deep into the heart of one of the universe's greatest mysteries, the origin of supermassive black holes. From the tantalizing possibilities of small seed models to the intriguing concept of heavy seed formation, we've explored the cosmic ballet that shapes the cosmos as we know it. But our journey doesn't end here, oh no. There's still so much more to uncover, so many more secrets waiting to be revealed. So, I urge you, don't let this be the final frontier. Stay tuned for more captivating content that delves into the wonders of space science. By subscribing to our channel, you're not just joining a community of passionate explorers, you're embarking on an ongoing adventure through the cosmos. Together, we'll continue to unravel the mysteries of the universe and marvel at the beauty of our cosmic home. So hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and join us on this incredible journey through space and time. Until next time, keep looking up, keep dreaming big, and keep exploring the infinite wonders of the cosmos. Together, we'll reach for the stars.